Hello and welcome to Andy Shed Live for this Sunday the 30th of January 2022. This is series 10 episode number 7. Hello there everybody, how are you? Hope you've had a good week. Just let me move my camera a bit because it's never in quite the right place when I start. <laughs> and I fiddle about with it for half an hour before we start as well, but still not right. So uh, yeah, well, welcome to the show. It's absolutely boiling hot in here today. I don't know what I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's absolutely roasting in this building today. Um, hello to everybody who is uh, already with us in the chat. I hope you can all hear me and see me fine. And crikey, there's been quite a lot of chat gone before as well today. Um, Christopher's here, Wesley's here, Penfold's here, Jimmy's here, Dominic's here. Um, 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 it looks like Dominic's moved. He says he's reporting from Belper this evening. Evening, Dominic. You're in Belper. You're if you go outside, Dominic, and shout, I'll probably be able to hear you from here. Um, from uh, our uh, our control centre, our nerve centre in the Lee of Bolsover Castle. Um, uh, oh, Paul Nolan's here as well. Cracky, everybody's here tonight. Miguet's here. Um, uh, uh, Gambo's here. Oh, it's not, it's a bit it would be better to go through a list of who's not here tonight. All right, well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, we have got a fairly busy show for you this evening. Um, if you're interested in old telephones, this is one for you. Um, lots of restoration projects, lots of stuff going on um, this evening. I've also got to say hello to Arthur, if Arthur's watching, um, because... Uh, he had problems logging into the chat, I know, but he often watches. So, hello, Arthur, um, if you're out there. One of your phones is coming up tonight, Arthur. And there is also a package on its way to you. Um, but one, one, of the, one of the things that you sent me is coming up tonight. Um, uh, 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 right, where are I? What's everybody saying in the chat? Uh, um, Dominic says, uh, a Mark 1 746, very interesting. My 67 Mark 1 Ivory 746 is on the shelf next to me at the moment. I have to get it on uh, I have to get it on uh, CNET, Dominic. You have to you have to join up with CNET and that. One day we will figure out how to take calls on this show. <laughs> one day we'll figure it out. We tried it once, it wasn't very successful, but we'll we'll sort it out one day. Um Oh, you can't see me. Oh hang on. Is that better? Is that better, Jimmy? You can, you can, you can see me now. Oh God! <laughs> right, I will, I will start again, and then we'll edit this bit off for the, for the repeat. So, hello, uh, good evening, and welcome to the show. I hope you've all had a good week there, and good evening to everybody who's in the chat as well. Lots of you in the chat tonight. Um, um, this is our second start now. You see, so. Um, yeah, so what's everybody been saying in this uh, in this old chat room before we get into the uh, into the restoration? Um, don't say the Mark One Seven Four Six. Very interesting. My sixty seven one is sitting at the side of me. Excellent, Dominic. You will have to get that on CNET. You have to get that connected up to CNET. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of Mark Ones tonight. Um, hello to Arthur, who uh, who sent one of the restoration projects tonight in to me. Um, so, hello Arthur, if you're out there, you know, I have trouble connecting to the chat, um, but I know you watch us. So, there, there is a package coming to you, Arthur, um, somewhere along the line, because I've found all the bits you wanted now. So, they're, they're in a box, and they'll, and they'll be on the way to you as soon as uh, the courier deems to come and collect them. Um, uh, 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 um, um, what did it say? You've still got the banner up, Andy. Can't see you. No, I haven't. I'm sure I haven't now. Can you see me now? Somebody, somebody in the chat say if you can see me now. Um, Christopher says my NBN telephone line got knocked out in the storm. 
so he's on his mum's iPhone internet uh, to watch the stream. Excellent, excellent. Oh dear, he's on an iPhone, so it might not last very long. <laughs> so if Christopher suddenly disappears, we know he's been appled. Right, right. Got quite a bit on uh, on tonight. Quite a bit to do tonight. But before we go ahead, remember if you want to get in touch with us and you're watching this after the event, you can either leave a comment on the video because I do look at them all, or you can contact us uh, on our website. You'll find a contact us link on the website, which is here, andyshed.callpress.net. And if you want to have a chat about what's on tonight's show, because I'm feeling you might when you see it, um, why not go to our forum, gpotelephones.com roboards.com that is there too right excellent so first off the bat tonight um, we've got a, a little bit to do here what do we what do we got first right first tonight um, this that was on last week remember this diacon 746 that came to me in bits last week and we managed to put most of it back together well there's a little bit more of it now to go back together because I have got the bits that need to go in the handset so we can unravel this and, and do that very quickly we can do that um, hang on let me get the right camera on it there we go um, so, we've got the mic in here, but in the earpiece end, nothing in it. However, I've got one of these. Um, now the one that I've managed to get is a 1963 one um, which should go quite well with this because although this is a kind of bits phone um, it is PL622 so <laughs> it's almost old enough to have come out this phone um, so one of the things we're going to do first up is um, Undo this, and this is one that's got. Oh, one of those has got a cross in for a screwdriver, and one hasn't. So some some of these have got like a slot in the top, so you can put a screwdriver in them. Some haven't, and one of those has, and one of those hasn't. So I'm going to have to get something to open. Open that. There we go. So the, so the one that hasn't can just start it off with that. So I can do that, and we can do that. I don't think we actually need to undo them all the way. And a quick tip, top tip here: tip this so it connections down, and then the little um, washer that's on there will drop down and you'll be able to put your wires under the washer so doesn't really matter which way around these go as far as I know they have to be threaded through the handset first which is a pain so red one will put on there under the washer and attempt to do it up very very fiddly put under the washer like that and do it up oh, the green one's a bit easier because it's got a slot in the top that little screw thing so I can do that with that one the red one I don't have to do it 
pair of little pliers probably. Like that, but that's that. And then the connections go between the two lugs inside there. Can you see those two lugs in there? Well, if those connections go between them, then it can't spin round. Or at least it can't spin round too far. Like that. Um, and this has got that bit of broken diacon in it there as well, but I think we'll get away with that. I think that'll just sit in there for now. And put that on so that's on so that's a little bit closer to being done I have also got to get the bell set sorted out for this because you may remember the bell set has got a couple of screws missing out of it um, but there it is um, so that is still waiting to be done so that's that for now so done that bit. Right. So we'll put that one out of the way. For now. Right, so what we're talking about this week is uh, 746 telephones. Um, basically. So we'll uh, we'll do some 746s. I'm just looking what people have been have been on about in the chat. Um, Dominic says, "Yeah, we can see you now." Um, Christopher says he's got his Mark One GC 746 clone, made in 1972. That's excellent. I see we've got a spam bot in. Um, Bought. Uh, 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 um. Spam. Right. That's it. We've got rid of the spam bot. We've zapped the spam bot. We must be getting popular. We're starting to get spam bots. Uh, <laughs> um, Dominic says, I popped into the local Wilco and they stock real acetone. Fantastic. Excellent. 100% acetone or 99% acetone. I didn't realise Wilco's had that. What department does, is the acetone in then, Dominic? Uh, Gambo says he can only get acetone free at the moment, so that's useless. Uh, Miguel says rocking armature receiver uh, should be fine. Yep, it should. Um, Is it in the nail varnish sort of department, the acetone? Because that's what they normally sell it as. They normally sell it as nail varnish remover. That's what that's what acetone normally is. It's normally nail varnish remover. Right, right. So it's now time for. You can't see it, yet, can you? Hang on. There. The restoration of another 746. Now there's a story behind this. Um, Arthur, who is a long time viewer of this channel and of this show in particular, sent me this in. Ar Arthur sent one or two phones in to be restored over over time. He, he, he's found phones in bits at car boot sales and things and, uh, and uh, he likes to see them get saved. Um, so he sends them in and goes, Andy, can, you do a, can you do something with this? Um, and we normally can. He sent us a, I think it was a blue uh, one some time ago it was got a smashed case and we did something with it um, this is uh, the latest arrival from Arthur as you can see it's the body of a Mark 1 746 you can tell it's a Mark 1 by that shape there I mean a sort of smooth shape and not having a step in it um, so we've got that but but also on eBay this week, somebody listed another phone. And in the listing, they put something like 
£10 start price or make an offer. And in the description they put very bad condition. And I thought, well, if the seller thinks it's in really bad condition, maybe I should make a low offer. So I said, I'll give you seven quid for it. And damn me, it got accepted straight away. So, as well as a green 746, we've also got a yellow one. <laughs> a two pass yellow one, and only when it got here, only when it arrived, did I realise that the topaz yellow one if I can uh, unwind it all because I've wound cord around it but only when it got here did I spot that the topaz yellow one is also a mark one if you can see that if it's not underneath the chat it's underneath the chat in it there you go you can see that it's a, it's a mark one case um, so tonight we've got a topaz yellow to a store but we're going to start with this green one um, that Arthur sent in so I think we've got most of the bits we need for this um, first thing we'll do is we'll see if the dial's any good not bad 1 1001 yeah it's reasonable speed back. a bit noisy though that dial for some reason I don't know why it should be so noisy um, so what we'll do is there's no no thing in the middle of that um, so we'll take the finger wheel off for a start I've been asked as well I've mentioned this before I've been asked where you get this screwdriver from that has all different bits that go in the end and they're kind of magnetic they, you know, clink in the end um, Big Clive uh, uses one of these as well if you watch Big Clive on YouTube um, I got this from the from one of the pound shops I forget which one it was now um, I think it was probably Pound World before it shut down and then became one below I don't think it was Pound Land I think it was a bit good for Pound Land but they are metal these screwdrivers and and pretty good for a pound you could also buy them out of Maplins when Maplins had shops and they were about three or four pound in Maplins, exactly the same thing, as far as I can tell. But yeah, so it came from the pound shop, so watch out for these in the pound shop, because they're pretty good. I have got two or three, I've got one that I keep in my coat pocket, and one on the desk here, and I think I've got another one in a toolbox somewhere. And, um, yeah, they are pretty good. Right, so take that apart, and we'll take that clip off the dial, and we'll take the number wheel off and we go in here and this is where I now start to think the dial's been replaced because it's one of the not so nice very late old plastic dials um, so I think the dial on this may have been replaced at some point because what date are we underneath we're 1970 underneath look uh, TMA 1970 but it had at some point been turned into an 8746 because it's got that red sticker so it has at some point had um, a plug and socket cord on it because all 8746 has had the plug and socket cord on but it's lost it at some point in its life along with it's lost a lot of other things so we're going to give it back some of the things that it's lost and again we've got no spring or anything on there take the top off and it's got an interesting sticker inside something that I've not seen before inside East 182 there can you see that East 182 no idea what that means but it looks like it should be there that sticker it looks like it's been stuck on nice and straight as if it's properly should be there so we will start having a little look at this, shall we? Um, now, the first thing we're going to do is put a bit of oil on it. I have no idea why it's so noisy. So, a little bit of oil. Um, I use this. This comes out of Wilco's. It's, it's, I swear this show is not a plug for Wilco's. 
Um, but this is just a light oil, a general light mineral oil um, that comes out of Wilco's. It's very similar to 3-in-1 uh, oil. It's basically Wilco's own brand of 3-in-1 oil. It may even be exactly the same, you know, just in a different bottle. That's, that's what supermarkets often do. And I'm just going to put a bit, and I, I do tend to over oil things a bit when I first get them. Um, because they might have been running dry for such a long time that it is kind of worth over oiling them just a little bit and then coming back maybe when, when things have settled into use and maybe taking some of the excess oil out. I don't know if we'll ever make this quiet though because it's one of these plastic dials and they're just a bit cheap and nasty these plastic dials. Um, right, so here we are then, so plastic dial and you may have noticed we've got no bells in it no bells but but we have got a little packet of bits that came with it and then the little packet of bits that came with it I mean there's things for bits for a wall phone and stuff but there it is also there's also a belt set now this bell set is not a 2000 ohm one. Um, it's 500 ohms per coil. So I don't actually think this would have been in this phone when it was an 8746. So I think the bell coils probably come out of something else. Um, because I think they would have changed the bell coils to a 2000 ohm set to go in an 8746 but these are what we've got handy I guess I could theoretically put these into that what's it one couldn't I? into that uh, into that 706 that I was doing last week but they would be correct for that, 500 ohm ones. Have we got a build date on them? 59C SPK1. And I don't know if that 59 is a date. What's these others got on them? Um, I can't read it. But I reckon that's a very old looking at it I reckon that is a very old bell set so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to put that coil into no because the others the others was the right coil for the, for the oh this has got one of those long screws missing as well look these screws here, these, it's got one missing. So this has got one missing. They seem to go missing, these screws. But we have at least got one in this one, so let's take it out and have a look how big it is. Then we can find out what sort of screw we're missing. So we're missing those. Ideally, I want three of those, like that. Yeah? Have I got any lurking about on the desk? Because sometimes I do have a few little screws lurking about on the desk here. But no, I've not got anything quite that big. I didn't think I would have. I would have remembered if I'd got one of those on here, and I haven't. those that might fit in there. Um, so, 
I shall put that back in here for now. But must remember that I need some. Will one hold it together for now? I think it probably will. But the trouble is, I'm likely to forget um, to put another one in. Right, we'll fit it anyway, so you can see what we do to fit it. Um, so, dial out, and luckily, the two screws in the bottom yeah, are still here. So, they kind of retain, so if you push them down a bit, they will start to come out a little bit. thing now you see the belt coils are wired in series so here's one of your connections that goes to your circuit board it goes to that tag on this coil then from the other tag on this coil it jumps across to that tag on that coil from the other tag on that coil it goes back out so they are wired in series to make a thousand ohms through your through your bells and what you basically do is there's a thing here I don't know if you can see this or not that's got like two different size like hook things on it and your bell coil sort of goes in and rests on that fiddly to get in but once you get it in it kind of sort of locks in and then we can do those screws up again underneath now on some phones you will find under these screws between these screws and the coil on this side you will find some little normally white plastic washers if you've got them put them in. If you've not got them, don't overly worry about it. Because I don't think it ha absolutely has to be um, earthed from the base. I don't think. Um, fiddly to put in. In fact they're very fiddly to put in. What's everybody up to in the chat? Wesley says they would definitely have been high impedance bells on an 8746. So Wesley's confirmed it. Um, and I'm sure he's right. Um, but what we've got these days, it, you know, when you're storing stuff these days, sometimes it has to be a, a case of you use what you've got. <laughs> um,
There you go. That's in there, and it it sort of moves from side to side. And of course, remember the bells. The hole that's drilled in the top of the bells is a little off centre. So if you can loosen them just a little bit. You can turn them around so they are closer to or further away from the clapper. And as you can see, the gap between them changes as I turn them around. See how close they are now, both to the both to the clapper. But if I turn them around now. They become a lot further away. There's a lot of space between them now. Um, so that's how you adjust them to get the tone right when you've actually got it all working. Right, so we've got that, and I found a screw here that I'm hoping will fit in the circuit board here because circuit board in the middle here it should have a screw and this one flops about the screw is missing out of it at the moment so I'll put it in place and I'm hoping this screw is going to fit it looks about right I'm not sure it is out of one of these originally though this might be out of Bakelite foam this screw but it's just a screw that happens to be lurking about a spare one I've got and it does fit so that's pretty good so all that is now together. Um, the dial is missing the harness that is the five wires that go between these five connections here and the um, circuit board of, of the 746. It's missing that harness. So, and I've not got one to hand at the minute. It's a bit that I'm. It's a bit I don't often get as a spare, actually, that harness. If anybody's got any of these tail harnesses, let me know. Um, but you can make them up just out of bits of wire. But So that's something that we'll have to wait for another day. So I can now put the dial back on and secure it with this screw at the top in its little hook. And now thread the bell wires back through and underneath there like that um, and this has already been converted for plug and socket on here because it's got uh, 16, 17, 18 and 19 all together as you can see um, so that points to it being an 8746 but as Wesley correctly says, it should have a 2000 ohm bell coil for an 8746. Right. Okie dokie. So, that's that bit of it. So, we're doing alright so far. Um, right, I'm just looking back in the chat. Um, Uh, Dominic says that uh, that acetone at Wilco's is in the beauty section. Uh, he says, I think I got some funny looks uh, going around there. Yeah, probably did Dominic, particularly in Belper. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Chris says he's got his new uh, 746 on his phone line. Uh, Peter's with us, Peter Blackburn. He says, can uh, isopropanol uh, be used instead? I don't know Peter, I don't know if that melts the plastic or not in the way that uh, acetone does. Um, I've never tried it because for me at least it's always been easier to get acetone. So uh, I've, tended to, I've tended to use acetone. Um, Dominic says that looks like it's in good condition. It's not bad Dominic, it's not bad. Um, the case, I have a feeling, I don't know, but I have a feeling uh, that Arthur probably restored this case before he sent it because Arthur's quite a patient chap and he sent me things with restored cases before um, 
you know, and he, he, he will sit there polishing on and that. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah he, he, make, he makes a good job. He, you know, when he, when he restores a case, he makes a good job of it. Um, Dominic says, what's the date on the red label? Um, 82, Dominic, 1982. Is the is the date on it? Um, you get so Israel had a very similar uh, Type One version with a variable bell control. A very strange item. Now, yes, me get um, right. I'm glad you mentioned that because I watched one of I think I watched one of your YouTube videos or something, or, or was it on the forum on here? Where you'd put something on about one of these, um, one of these Israeli um, telephones that is basically a seven four six in disguise, and you talked about it having this bell control, which is a little lever that fits in here, um, and some UK ones had them as well. Some very late UK ones had that little bell control as well, and it fits in here in this slot here. And, and I can see in the base there, there's a hole that goes through, and that's where the lever pokes through. Um, so some UK ones did have them. Not many, well, probably a lot have got them, but it's not many compared to how many were made overall. Um, but yeah, some UK ones did definitely have it. It's usually very late ones um, that have got it. But it, it did happen. It did happen, and I'm not sure if there might be mono ringers as well. I might just have one bell coil. The ones I've got that. I'm not sure. Um, um, uh, uh, what does he says he's found GPO uh, 711 or 741 uh, at Flinders Street Station. Um, yeah, two of the seven four ones or seven one ones. You don't know which they are because the cases are exactly the same. So unless you take the case off, you don't know which one it is. Unless you, of course, you turn it upside down or pull it off the wall and look at the back of it and see the number that's on it. Um, Wesley says I got a glut of high impedance coils off of eBay from a guy who converted seven o sixes into table lamps. Oh yeah, I think I saw those. Yeah. Um, um, Dominic says, I hope there weren't any rare 700s turned into lamps. I bet there were. <laughs> I bet there were um, because it does happen. Um, but having said that, I've got quite a few candlesticks now that I've only got because somebody converted them into table lamps. Um, well, it says, I've got some NOS dial looms, Andy, uh, but they're much longer than a standard dial loom. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder what they were for. Unless they were for dials fitted to switchboards or something like that. Um, it says, you're welcome to one. Well, how much longer are they, Wesley? They're ridiculously long. Uh, they'd probably not be a massive amount of help for this, but uh, yeah, how much, how much longer are they? Um, Gambo says, I've seen those lamps and want to buy them to convert them back. Yes, the lamps, the, the, the candlesticks that are turned into lamps, um, I have got some. Converting them back. Um, is not generally too difficult but there's quite a bit of work involved because getting parts is is hard so basically you have to completely rewire them normally um, and there's a bit of soldering and that involved um, um, but some of the lamp conversions are horrendous because they tend to use um, the hook switch to turn the lamp on and off, so they have the they have the brass uh, handset, something sort of brass receiver, and you hang that on 
on the hook you know and that makes and breaks the contact and that's what turns the lamp on and off but they use the original wiring in the thing so this very weedy wiring like that they're sending like 240 volts down in you know and it's not very well insulated and you know it's old wiring from 1920s and stuff and they're using it to switch 240 volts that absolutely horrendous some of the conversions that I've seen I mean of course luckily I don't use them as lamps um, but yeah I must get them finished off I, I, I've kind of started converting them back into phones but I've not got any of them really completed yet partly because getting bell sets for them is a bit of a problem and you need the bell set with them because you need the induction coil because if you don't have an induction coil you can make the phone work without an induction coil but it can damage um, it can damage the, uh, the the modules in the handset and that if you're not careful um, particularly the um, the um, the speaker in the uh, in the earpiece um, uh, uh, um, right oh well just I've got a 746 with a bell control uh, it's a red mark 1 so maybe retrofitted well, I don't know if they, if they were done right from the beginning of 746s or not. The ones that I've seen have been on late ones. Um, but I'm not saying they didn't do it right from sort of late 60s, early 70s. But the ones that I've seen have been on late ones. What I will say is they've always got this bit at the front to fit one. Now, if they were a, a later edition you'd think the early phones wouldn't have that but they do so the, so it was always there so it could be fitted so maybe they did do them right from the beginning in 1967 or 68 or whenever it was um, where it says what will do a lot will do a little there's plenty of space to lose some excess wire Good point, Wesley. There is. Um, uh, Christopher says, GC version of the 746, the clone, um, it doesn't have an induction coil. Uh, and the step down lamps on the circuit board, I put a picture on the forum. Yeah, well, they'd be built to a price, you see. Um, but if you don't have the induction coil it won't damage anything in the circuitry overnight it'll take ages and ages and ages and ages to do it but it will go eventually after many years which ones with it, with an induction coil won't um, right okay shall we go shall we go back to this so here we are I've, I've put the I've put the uh, the bell coil in um so what are we going to fit now all right this is where now i have to uh i have to get my little crib sheet thing out with my little diagram on because i can never remember how these go um so here's the converted version of the 746 and the 8746 um so that's what we're what we're going to wire up so from the uh, bell set I've got to put one leg to T4 and one leg to T16 uh, by the looks of that it's that, that sort of pinky purpley colour on, on this particular one so one lock T4 one lock to T16 and then of course um, the resistor, the what is it? One point. It's three point three. Three point three kilo ohm resistor between T four and T five. Okay. So that's the next bit then. So 
one leg goes T4. And of course these have got completely round things on the end of them. So you've got to take the screw right out, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, they're not just spade connectors or fork connectors, as you would more correctly call them. Um, so I've got to add it out, put it through the hole, and put it back in. And my little fat fingers are not brilliant at this. Now I have got a special GPO device for doing this, a special screwdriver that holds screws. But I'll tell you something, it doesn't work very well. It's not very good. Um, so I'm not using it at the moment because it's out in the back of the van at me in a toolbox. Um, so one goes there and one goes on the end of this row of four here. in there like that now we've not got the dial loom yet so I can't do the dial loom yet what I can do though because I've got one here is we can do the handset it didn't come with a handset but I have one in stock and it's quite a nice one as well it's quite nice and shiny almost makes you wonder if it's a diacon one is there a number 12 anywhere on it? I'm looking inside the cap and I can't read the numbers. No, 21A, I think it says in there, but it should say either 12 or 17 somewhere. Um, just a number 7 in there. I'm not sure. I don't think it's Diacon. It's quite a shiny one though. I don't think it's Diacon. This end. Oh, it's dated night. Right. If that's original in there, that's dated 1963, so it probably would be Diacon if that's the case. Right. And people say you should find, on the cases, you find a number 12 or a 17 on the cases. If it's 12, it's Diacon. If it's a 17, it's ABS. But I don't know if those numbers also apply to the handsets because I can't find a number of either 12 or 17 on this handset but it is relatively shiny I don't know hmm. interesting it's certainly got a later lead on it one of the smaller leads if you look at it at the side of the black foam that's on my desk that's got an early lead look how chunky that lead is and look how not chunky this green one is um, and that's the difference between early uh, curly cord and a later curly cord. Right, so we'll put this on. Of course, it could be a Diacon handset that's uh, received a later curly cord at a later date onto the original handset. It is possible. RLE 74, it says on this cord. Yeah, is that a date? Right, anyway, so we will now stick this together then. So it's red, green, blue to T1, T2 and T3, um, and then white to T10. So T1 is red. And we have got here fitted this little red thing. What this actually is, is two little back-to-back -back diodes. And the idea is it stops loud noises uh, in, in the earpiece. 
uh, the loud clicks and things in the earpiece and that's the idea of it but they are not crucial so if your phone's not got them it will still work without them red and all they are is two little diodes back to back and there's people now on the internet selling them for a ridiculous amount of money and all it is is two diodes uh, wired back to back and a bit of a uh, sort of heat shrink put over them so you can't see what they are and they're like selling them as telephone space for quite a bit of cash um, but I generally don't put them in don't bother with them it's just an extra part to go wrong in my opinion it's not really necessary. Um, so red, green, blue, and white down on T10 on the bottom row. There we are, and although they're all on sort of this side of the circuit board, of course when you put the uh, little grommet in its mount, you put it over the other side, you stretch it out and put it over the other side. No idea why you cross them. Maybe Wesley can tell me why you cross them. Do you know Wesley? Why why you why you cross them? And when these are all sort of on the, roughly on this side of the circuit board, you put the thing on that side and all, and then the line cord fittings that are all kind of on this area. You pull it over and cross it and put it on this side. I, I've, I've never quite understood that. I would have thought you would have put them on where you, you know, closest to where they were, but they do always seem to be crossed when you get one that's anything like original. Um, so that's that. Right. Next thing then. Next thing. We've got Arthur's excellent case, which I think is colour restored. Um, you can still see slightly where the tail bezel was. Now, this isn't Mark 1. Um, it could, theoretically, I believe, have had three different bezels, this. It could have had an alphanumeric bezel if it was a 746L. L standing for lettered on the bezel. Of course, we don't know because, unlike with 706s, by the time they got to 746s, not every manufacturer put an L or an F on the bottom after the number. So this has just got 746. It doesn't tell us if it's L or F. So we don't know. Um, then, of course, there's the 746 plain bezels. Like this one. But this is a light coloured one. Now, of course, green phones are two-tone. Handsets are always a dark colour cases are always a light colour you see but the bezel can either be a light colour like this one or a dark colour and something that I've not quite worked out is the history of these bezels because I always thought the light coloured bezels came later um, because I thought the dark coloured bezels when, when they were alphanumeric they were always a dark coloured green, the alphanumeric ones, always a dark colour. Yeah? So I thought when they became plain, they just continued with the dark colour straight on the plain one. Yeah? And then the light coloured bezels came along later, much later, so to an 8746 and that came along. But I don't know for certain, but somebody queried this some time ago and said, they thought it was other way around. They thought they started out with dark ones, then had light ones, then went back to dark ones again. So light ones came somewhere in the middle. So I don't know for certain. So this phone maybe should have a dark one. But I've just been and had a look and I could have sworn I got some dark green bezels, but can't blow me a find one when I want one. So for for now at least it's getting a light green bezel. Um, so what we do here 
is we take the phone. Remember, you've got to watch out for the cutout in the bezel here for where the finger stop is, and that marries up with that cutout there. But to put it on, you've got to put it on so that the clips on the back of this go through these four little holes here. So you've got to sort of jiggle it around till it's on and then spin it into place where you want it, somewhere there like that. So, so there it is. Ta-da! Right, so that's that. So I'm now going to have a go at putting that back on. And remember, there's this lip on the front of a 746 case which goes um, under that thing on the front of the base there which is where that switch would be um, for the volume control for the bells so if you've got the volume control for the bells I imagine fitting the case is even more tricky um, than it is when you've not got one <laughs> and it was tricky enough so you just have to jiggle it all about a bit and eventually it kind of goes on like that then you find your little screw which should really be retained but again on a lot of 746 I find they're not and I wonder if it was a cost cutting measure that they didn't use a spring anymore and they didn't use a little nut on the end that they used on the 746s because when you get one that's missing the spring and the nut it's nearly always a 746 not a 706 they're nearly always present on the 706s so that going there like that. So now uh, that can go on there like that. And it's looking better already, isn't it? Um, so we can probably think about maybe putting the dial back together now. So that clips on there like that. Um, on here now this pin thing, you can see the two little I'll get it there, you can see it better probably the two little kinks in this which go around um, these two pegs that stick through the dial plate here um, obviously there's a raised bit on this dial plate here, just below this peg so this can only go one way around if it went that way around which is wrong you see that bit of spring sticks over the raised bit there so it goes the other way around and then the spring does not stick over the raised bit I know I'm telling some of you guys stuff that you already know but there are people who come along and watch these videos um, who are like restoring a phone for the first time and that so I go over it for the benefit of that basically um, so now I can put the finger wheel back on make sure it locates on the little pips there and then we find the screw that goes in the middle and I've said this before but I will say it again because I've said this many times the finger wheel you have to make sure you get the correct finger wheel if it has got a um, countersunk middle a countersunk hole in the middle of the finger wheel you need a screw with a countersunk head this one hasn't this has just got a straight through hole in the middle and a flat back to it so I've got a screw here that's got a flat backed head um, because if you fit the wrong screw with the wrong finger wheel you will end up cracking the finger wheel and I do have the different sorts of finger wheel in stock in the uh, in the shop um, if you go to andysemporium.callpress.net the finger wheels are in stock for whichever type you need. So there we go. One one thousand and one.
that's about right. I also need, of course, you may have spotted it, a blanking plate to go in there. Um, so I have to have a look, see if I've got one of those kicking around, and a line cord as well, of course, but I can't really do anything with it until I've uh, sorted out uh, a thing for the dial anyway. So that is rather cool. We might as well finish it off though, haven't we? Um, somewhere in here. I should have. A sheet of blank labels. So I'm going to get a pair of scissors and we will cut out some blank labels just to say. I am back. Right, so we'll cut it out some of the labels. I sort of redrew these in a computer program um, so I could just cut them out when I want one. And it's the cutting them out that's the art part. I know you can get circle cutters, but a lot of the circle cutters that you can buy um, make a sort of pinhole in the middle of the circle that you're cutting out, which is not what you want really. Um, now there are some that don't, but they, are, they make a very specific size circle, and I'm not sure I can get on the right size for this. So I end up just get very carefully uh, cutting around them with a pair of scissors. All those years of watching Blue Peter help here. Now, if you're using sharp scissors, children, make sure you get a grown up to help you. They go mad at these because these are super pointy, these scissors. Look at them. <laughs> um, so, there we go. There's a label. I can put that in the middle of there. Is that straightish? Oh, hang on. I'm actually looking at it on a monitor see, <laughs> to see if it's straight or not because I'm doing it all upside down here. Again, Blue Peter style. Um, and then I've also got, because I found one out earlier, one of these. These are rare as rocking horse poo. <laughs> um, what they call the opal, the thing that goes in the centre. Different on a 706. On a 706 they're a solid quite thick piece of plastic on a 746 it's not solid it's got kind of a rim around it um, but that goes in there it clips in there like that and uh, and there we have it and that is basically um, another phone well on the way to being restored I know it's not completely um, restored but it's well on the way so uh, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that and thanks again to Arthur for sending the body of this phone in um, for its restoration as you can see Arthur this phone will live um, to make calls another day so we'll find the rest of the bits out that we need for doing it and uh, maybe get it completed next week or something Right, what's everybody up to in the chat? I've been ignoring it a bit because I've been engrossed in doing that. Let's have a let's have a little look. Oh, Jimmy's Jimmy's leaving us. Bye, Jimmy. I think he might have gone already. Um,
Paul says, it's funny, I've been looking out for some decent Mark 1 746s of late and quite by chance had to fix my mum's old boiler in the loft. I found one of my old bags full of phones I rescued 20 years ago. Uh, all from an NHS skip outside our workshop. Most of them are ivory mark ones. Excellent, you've done well there then, Jimmy. No, Paul, isn't it? It's Paul that's found them. Well there, Paul. Um, where does it say that's a nice find? Indeed it is. Um, Dominic says, so many things would be lost if they weren't rescued from a skip. It's very, very true. Um, I went past a skip the other yesterday I think it was yeah yesterday morning Saturday morning full of shop fittings you know shelving units out of shops absolutely full and they put all sort of big lumps of wood on top of them and so bent them and smashed them all like that but yeah they, they'd have been really useful for putting lots of telephones on um, Uh, Dominic says, I seem to remember that some otherwise lost television was saved from a skip. Yes, Dominic, a lot. A lot of lost TV shows have been found of skip, out, out of skips. Lost television shows basically come from three sources. When, when you see like an episode of Dad's Army that's been recovered, it will have likely come from one of three sources. It will likely have either have come from a television company abroad who have kept it in an archive somewhere even though they've not got the rights to show it anymore but it's just sort of languished in the corner of a room in a film camp. Um, um, it will have come um, out of Bob Monkhouse's back garden because Bob Monkhouse kept an amazing archive of uh, old television shows and that in his garden. He had one of the first home video recorders, did Bob, and he used it religiously. In fact, I think it, I think he ended up with about four or five video recorders, and this is when there were only like three or four channels. Um, and he religiously used to go through the TV times. Um, writing down what he wanted to record and a lot of shows a lot of his own shows ironically um things like celebrity squares that would have been lost and been wiped by the tv companies long ago only exist today because bob kept a copy and the other place that stuff comes from is out of skips people who have been passing a skip seen a load of film cans in a skip thought that's interesting what's that off seen a load of videotapes in a skip thought that's interesting what's that Hoiked them out the skip, and when they look at them, they find it's a lost dad's army or a lost Doctor Who or, or something like that. Um, these, these things tended to come out of skips in the 70s or, or early 80s. Um, and then, then whoever took them out of the skip would have kept them in a garden shed for years. Persons now died, um, relatives are clearing the house out, find these cans in the shed look at the leader on the film, see it says BBC television, they get in touch with the BBC, go, we've got something here of yours, and the BBC go, gimme, 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 and, and get it back, and then make lots of money from BBC Enterprises, um, by reissuing that programme, uh, that they've got back, and I just hope they, um, um, have the good sense to pay the people who um, give them their own program back because if it wasn't for these people that had kind of slightly illegally taken the stuff in the first place out of the skip but if it hadn't been from slightly illegally doing that these things wouldn't exist now so in a way it's good that somebody kind of committed a crime um, Oh, we're back to the thing about the receiver. Wesley says, I've always picked up the receiver 
with my left hand and dialed with my right hand. If that's the norm, then I guess it stops the wires crossing over. Yes, it does stop the wires crossing over, but... Right, here you go then. So you pick up the receiver with your left hand, like so, and dial with your right hand, like so. Then the wires don't cross over. But I've always picked up the receiver with my right hand, because I'm right-handed. And then what I do, when I've got it in my right hand, like that, as I'm putting it to my ear, like that, I always swap hands like that so I've got my right hand free to hold a pen if necessary um, so I always do that and then when I'm putting it back down I basically go and hang it up like that <laughs> am I just weird but to do that you see if you then hang it up with your right hand which I do sometimes you tend to hang it up that way around and then the wires cross over and the chap who used to look after the telecoms at the National Chowmay Museum, a guy called John Markham. Um, um, very nice chap, John Markham. He used to have a great laugh with John Markham. But it drove him barmy. And he used to he used to come into the office at office at cry and he'd say, Greetings! And I'd say, Greetings, John. And he'd walk over to me and there'd be two or three telephones on the desk. On, and, and he always used to just go, uh, uh, <laughs> and turn all the handsets around on the telephones. <laughs> so I, 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 I never ever, I'll never ever forget John Markham doing that. His, his catchphrase was greetings. He always said greetings. Um, if, if ever you've been to the National Tramway Museum at Crite and you've been on a tram and the driver of the tram said greetings to you, that was probably John Markham. Very tall bloke. Works for, works for the railway inspector, believe it or not, as well. Um, but also do a tram at Crite. Um, nice guy. Um, uh, Gambo says, I bought a stack of retaining screws and bolts as so many were missing from foam. I bought and converted in the past. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're missing these little retaining screws. I've got a couple on the desk here, but they're just the screws without the little without the little spring on and without the the fancy nut on. Cause it is quite a fancy shaped nut when you look at it cl up close. But I just and I get so many that are just the screws, and I wonder if in later years they just put the screws in just to save that little bit of money. Um, Penfold says I've used a typewriter font on my computer to write in the telephone exchange a number on the labels to give a more real look yes you can do that I have done that on on some here um, I can't really show it yet because it's got my phone number on it if I show, if I show it <laughs> that like billions of people across the world will have the potential to know my phone number um, but yes I, you can do that um, and I did a sp I've done a special CNET dial centre as well that looks a bit like these uh, like this one but is uh, is a special CNET version and I'll tell you what I can do with this and tell you what I'll tell you what I can what I can do with this if I because it's got a plastic cover on it, so if I put a little bit of Tipex on part of the number, then I can show you it, can't I? Then I can rub the Tipex off later, it comes off easy. Uh, hang on. Right. So, this is the black one that's on my desk all the time. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to come over here so we can see it. Um, come over here, phone. There you go. Can you see that? Well, that's it. That's got a, a special version of a of a card that I did. The trouble is the light gets in it because this camera's got a light on it and it, it reflects in it. So there's my my special version. Get me 
camera back in focus now. Hang on. Right, we're back. But that, this is the 746 clone, 706 clone, by the way. It is not a genuine 706. It is a clone phone. Right, I can now rub the, the tipex off, which has dried. And there we go. Back to how it should be. Right. Um, yes, so we've done this green phone now, as far as we can probably get with it today. So we will now put that one back somewhere and we'll have a look at this one now this one that has come from the interweb um, so we'll have a look inside this one shall we this one has got a cover on the dial and this one's got a very slow dial a very slow dial Oh dear, that doesn't sound very good, does it? Uh, so have we got bits in in here? Yep. Yeah, that looks like that's possibly original in there. Uh, it looks like 68 as a date on that. So that's pretty good. Is that the element inside there made in 1968? That one's 1969. When was the phone made? 69. So that is pretty good. It's pretty good. We're at 1969. Right. Um, shall we take the back? So we take the case off and have a look inside and again no no spring no nut there we go case is off put these away oh, yeah. That's it, case is off. Um, and this one looks like it has not been converted at this stage. Um, 500 ohm coils. Um, very, very dirty and dusty inside. When you get one that's dusty inside of that, um, a small, relatively stiff paintbrush. Um, is quite a good thing for just getting in there and maybe moving some of the dead spiders and things out of the way. So we really need to get into this dial, don't we? So it may be time for the old cellar tape trick. Other sticky tapes are available. Right, just bear with me one moment. I'll see what we can do. Decreasing circles now in the, in the channel. What are we talking about? Speak says 
the character that Richard Bryars played on Ever Decreasing Circles always used to swap the receiver over like you just described, Andy. So he picked it up. So he picked it up with his right hand and then put it in his left hand. Did he? Or, or did he turn it round? Did he, did he always turn it round on the thing? Now it was Richard Bryars. It wasn't John Markham, was it? It was Richard Bryars. <laughs> Right, I'll be back in a moment. I'm just going to go and get some sticky tape. I don't know where the sticky tape's gone that I normally use. I found I found a bit of insulating tape instead, which will do the same job. They will say, "Why don't you get one of the suckers that they used to use? The GPO used to use for this." Well, the simple answer is I've never actually seen one, and I'm told the GPO didn't used to use them all the time. Anyway, they used to do this, um, but there you go. It just lifts it out like that. So that's relatively easily. Now remember what I was saying about the right sort of screw in the middle of the dial. The other one was, was a screw with a flat back on it. Well this one here is a countersunk one I can tell because it's set right into the dial. You see that is a, a screw and you can see that very well but that is a screw with a countersunk head that one and that is countersunk but it has been put in too far even with the countersink in and that's what's cracked it but what is this a strange little washer that's been put on behind it and that little washer that's been put on behind it is possibly what's made that crack because that will probably have been flat when it was put on the screw's been tightened up in it it's dented that washer in because I've never found one with a little washer on there before like that as far as I'm aware the screw should go straight in there like that not with the washer so that's pro that little washer is probably what's cracked it I don't think that little washer should be on there let me know if you know different, if you have ever found one with a washer, but I don't think that should be there. Right. So now we can remove the spring clip, remove the plate. Oh, now this is an interesting one. These are quite rare, but I have seen them before. It's a dial that's made out of all clear plastic They're quite rare but I have seen them before um, I think it may be one manufacturer that did it um, but it's kind of a bit yellowy but is it a dial 21 or is it the later type dial. Can we find a number or anything on it? Um, being clear, even if there is one, it'll be very hard to see. Um, and I 
can't see anything on it at the moment. But it's interesting because it is um, an all clear dial. And if you notice this arrangement here is a little bit different that holds this holds this cog. So yeah. A slightly oddball variant of the dial. So that's quite nice. That's quite nice. Something a little bit different. Um, but it does need um, something to get it going a bit. So let's try giving it a bit of oil. Wants to get a bit to run into the bearings at the end of the at the ends of the uh, governor. A little bit on the on there. And then what you can do is just put the finger wheel back on on its own. For a moment, and it's going quicker already. One, one thousand and one. It's getting there. One one thousand and one. One one thousand and one. One one thousand and one. And I'm I'm a bit loath. I could probably speed that up a little bit, but I'm a bit loath to because as the oil sort of penetrates into it, it will get quicker. So if I speed that up now, and then go away and, and use it a few times tonight, and then go away and leave it next week, it will be too fast. So, I'm a bit loath to speed it up any more um, just yet. That. But what I will do is I will take these mucky bits and go and give them a bit of a wash. And I will be back in a moment when I've just rinsed these. They've just had a quick, uh, a quick wash in a bit of uh, washing up liquid and uh, water. And look how sparkly they are now! Really, really sparkles things up. Just a bit of washing up liquid and warm water. That's the best thing for cleaning these. So now that can go back on there like that. Put the uh, white thing back on there, and then we can put that back in place, um, 
and the screw which I'm putting back on without that strange washer because I don't think that strange washer should really be there I mean the nice early dial 21's that you sometimes sounds fine were a mixture of plastic and metal but basically all the gears and that were metal and then much nicer dials and the dial 12's which is a very early 706 has had they are really nice dials that's what this phone's got that's on the desk here that's always on the desk the black one and if you kind of run them around a bit you can sort of work the work the oil in a bit one one thousand and one 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 thousand and one it's still a bit slow, but it's better than it was. Um, and this has got the dial loom, this one. Um, so I can now put that back on there, and put that back on there, like that. Tighten that back up on there, like that. And we're not going to convert this one for now. Um, but as I've got them, put them away but I've still got them um, we will cut it onto label Doo -ba -doo -doo -doo. Talk amongst yourselves a moment while I do this. I'm having another one of my Blue Peter moments. Center of there, put the thing back on, pop, and there we go. So, uh, we'll now put the case back on this for now. Now we know it's basically all there, and then this one will get converted at some point, hopefully, in the not too distant future. Now, if you put the case on with the finger wheel, I, I often leave the finger wheel off until I've got the case on but if you're putting it on with the finger wheel on then the way to do it is hook that thing at the front underneath there and then what you have to do is get hold of one end at the back there but the other hand at the front you have to sort of get in the, in the top of the finger wheel and pull it out and up and pu push the case down at the same time and that is how you get it on with the finger wheel still on um, but if in doubt take the finger wheel off and do it <laughs> right so we've done that I've done that done that screw and don't put these screws in too far because when when they are without the spring you can put them in too far go beyond the thread on the screw because the screws are not threaded all the way to the end as you can probably see from this one um, and you can go beyond the thread of the screw and then you can't get the damn things out again if they've not got the spring to push them out so um, it can be a bit tricky that so don't put them in too far if you've not got the spring on. Um, so there, yeah. There we have it. A rather nice seven pound, I think it was. Seven pound plus about three quid postage, so it probably was about tenner in the end. Um, 
Mark 1. Um, 746. And I'm going to take that Dell label out again because that feels a bit wobbly. Is that why it had that strange washer in there? Let us see. Right. Will that tighten up a bit more? Yes, it will. There, it's not so wobbly now. So, I've got a fingerprint on that now. I'll do another one at some point. Um, so there we go. There we have it. A rather nice smart one. Mark 1, uh, 746, and it just wants a bit of use, just keep doing that, and hopefully the oil will work its way in. I mean, not really forcing it back like that, you're just giving it a helping hand. You know, helping the spring to go back, because the mechanism's stiff. a bit slow but it's not too bad right okie dokie right so that's another one we've had a quick look at um, put the top on the oil think about it and knock it on the floor and it's silly um, right well as you said it's a bargain it was Wesley it was quite good that I was quite impressed with that I didn't even realize it was a mark one till it got here um, Christopher says, my mum likes a GPO 746 phone because she had a red one. Um, it might have been a Mark 1 746. Uh, she's in the 70s uh, about that time. Uh, my mum never had a, a go at wiring a 746 phone. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I had a red 746 as well. At one point, I, I, had, a, uh, I had a red one. Um, when I first moved into this house where we are now, there was, there was a red... You know, I don't even really know, because it's a long time ago. I don't even really know if it was a 746 or a 706. I think it was a 746. But I don't know if it was a Mark 1 or a Mark 2. I, I, I honestly don't know now. But, of course, they came and GPO came took it away, or BT or whatever they were called then. Telecom, they were probably being called at the time. Came and, uh, and took it away when they fitted sockets. When they fitted the master socket, we thought it was all exciting because you could plug phones in and have like extensions and things. Um, and we thought we couldn't have extensions before. If only I'd known, all you had to do get a phone and two wires and a screwdriver. <laughs> but no, you had to call the man out from the GPO or from telecom or whatever. That must have been a really good job going around and fitting telephones to houses. Because there's like just nothing to it really, is there? Um, <laughs> until you have to wire up an office or something and a switchboard and it gets a bit more complicated um, uh, Dominic says I think my mobile data is starting to have to, to play up I might have to go he says BT in their wisdom have decided to take two weeks to connect me properly oh no Dominic no no, that's a bit pants, isn't it? That is, that is a bit pants, that. Um, uh, yes, um, yeah, well, welcome to Belper, Dominic. Well, welcome to Belper. Well, now you're a local, we'll have to uh, do another escape the shed sometime soon. I have got something quite close to Belper that I do want to cover. Something railway related that's a bit on the unusual side. Um, um, Wesley says, have I missed anything? 
just received a call on my 746L. Um, uh, yeah, you, you've missed me restoring another, 74, another 746, Wesley, or at least having a look at one, this one. Um, um, people asking Dominic what's the delay in getting his... Uh, in getting his internet and that done, Dominic. So I'm not sure. The previous tenant was with BT, so there shouldn't be any new lines to install. No, I think they just take the time putting your broadband in or connecting your broadband up and stuff. I think that's the problem. Penfold says it's BT, Dominic. Always full of excuses. Um, Dominic says, look, I ordered it a week ago. So only a week disconnected. Yeah, cool. So by next Sunday then, Dominic, you should be online. Hopefully, you should be. You should have got. You should have got yourself sorted out by next Sunday. Or BT should have got it sorted out for you. Um, whereas it says, just think, if it was the 60s or 70s, you could have been waiting 18 months, and that is no joke. And yeah, that is true, actually, isn't it? You people were waiting ages and ages to get a phone line put in um, uh, Christopher says he's put his new GEC phone on the forum excellent Christopher so if you want to go and have a look at Christopher's new phone uh, head on over to the forum gpotelephones.proboards.com um, Dominic says, I've never seen one of those clear dial 21s. Yeah, I'm not really sure that the dial 21s or if they're something else, Dominic. Um, they're rare. They don't turn up very often, but I have, I have seen two or three in my time. Um, um, so, yeah, I think it was probably one manufacturer that made them, but uh, I'm not 100% certain on that. Uh, Wesley says, I can remember a guy I used to work with uh, hurriedly uh, refitting his hardwired 746 um, as BT had contacted him to convert him to plug and socket, which he'd done himself years before. <laughs> I like it. Um, uh, Penfold says, when I was at Openreach, the old BT GPO wiring caused big problems uh, to internet wiring, uh, star wiring, uh, and I had to rewire many houses uh, to get the service working. Uh, Chris says, I sent a photo of a 711 stroke 741 at Finder Street Station in the email. Cheers Christopher, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that next week. Um, and, uh, and he says, I saw a clear GPO 746L phone on eBay. Yes, beware. Those clear phones are not genuine. Um, there were a very small number of clear 746ers made, I believe that were totally clear and basically they were made as a promotional thing um, to go on like trade stalls at big exhibitions and stuff like that where the GPO had uh, had a stand to kind of show the internal working of the telephone from the outside um, but there were very very few of them made and I think they even did it back with Bakelite ones as well I think they even made clear Bakelite ones but there were very, very few made. But in recent years, people have started to produce replica bodies that are clear. Um, but the replicas are not genuine. The real ones are quite yellowy. If you looked at this dial in this phone here, um, when I had it apart, you'll notice, although it's clear, it was kind of a yellowy clear. Um, and that's how the real ones are. So. Um, you know because they've yellowed with age and that um, so it's kind of like looking through amber almost um, but there are very few of them about so if you see a clear 746 it could be a genuine old one it's far more likely to be a 746 chassis that's had a new body and, and handset put on it far more likely so beware 
Um, Wesley says self-install was the worst thing for ADSL. In the early days you always had an engineer install which would have resulted in no star wiring and an NTE 2000. Those plug-in filters are awful. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> I've replaced lots of them over time. Having said that though, they are good for changing because you can whip one out quickly and change it because they do die. The capacitors are something in them die, I think. Um, because I've had problems here before now. This very show has gone off air in the past because the filter has died, the broadband filter, uh, and it's killed the internet. Um, so yeah, that, that has happened in the uh, in the past right I believe that is probably about as far as we go uh, for today folks thanks to everybody for taking part again it's been an absolute cracker of a show again today lots of you in the chat which is really really good to see um, remember if you want to get in touch with us in the week you can you can go to our telephone forum here gpotelephones.proballs.com and have a chat on there if you want um, or remember you can always just leave a comment on this video and stuff or you can get in touch with me via the website there's a contact form on this website uh, andyshed.com press.net and if you like what you've seen here um, you can find us on patreon as well and just for a pound a month you can join us on patreon get your name on the end credits of this show and uh, you're also supporting what we do and make it possible to do even more in the future if you want to support us go here www.patreon.com forward slash and is shed uh, one final thing to say before I go, because I've not mentioned it yet tonight, the radio station. The radio station is happening, folks. Um, yes, the radio station is happening. We actually move in, uh, get the keys for the studio space on Tuesday of this week. Um, so we might make a, uh, a special video. In fact, there might be one or two special videos coming out this week. It's possible there might be something coming out tomorrow as well. So if you're not subscribed already, subscribe to the channel. And also make sure you click that little belly thing so it notifies you when we do a live stream or when we put a new video up. Um, because otherwise it, there's just a chance, I'm not saying for definite, but there is just a chance that you might miss something this coming week. Um, so do make sure you click that little belly thing on YouTube um, right that is about as far as we go for today thanks to everybody for taking part Christopher says I've got a GC 52A junction box that, that one that came with your phone Christopher um, um, and Penfall says yes well, so the data speed is bad with star wiring um, I put in NTE 5C master socket and SSFP service specific uh, faceplate helps a lot. Cool. Right, that is about as far as we go, as I say. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you all back here, all being well, same time, same place next week, if we've not caught up with you before that which we may have um, but for me for now have a fantastic week ahead stay safe everybody keep those masks on despite what the idiot Boris says and uh, we will see you soon okay bye for now <laughs>